Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Sirach 17 reads as Eight through eleven. The book of Sirach, chapter seventeen, and verse eight. He set his eye upon their hearts that he might show them the greatness of his works. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding, and the elect shall praise his holy name. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. Read it again, verse eleven. Yes, sir. Verse eleven. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. So the law was given to us knowing what's pleasing to him. Give me Baruch chapter 4. Got to wait till my damn spirit come down from being pissed to even getting the spirit to teach. Read Baruch 4. Read 1 through 4. The book of Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. So the law that was a heritage to us was given to us because it makes the Lord happy. We're the only people that can please him. Go to Sirach 24. Sirach tw 24. Let me see. Sirach 24, read verse 1. The, the book of chapter. Sirach, chapter 24 and verse 1. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. Jump down to verse uh, read 6 through 8. Verse 6. Talking in, about wisdom. In the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation, I got a possession. All right. Read verse 1 again. Yes, sir. Verse 1. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. Jump down to verse 6. In the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation, I got a possession. Okay, wisdom, go ahead. With all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. So wisdom that makes God happy be with Israel. Give me the definition of honorable. Definition of honorable, deserving of respect or high regard. So the knowledge that makes God happy, that was that's pleasing to him, given to us, it says what? Read it again. Deserving of respect or high regard. Go back to the scriptures and read verse uh, 9 through 12. Sirach chapter 24 and verse 9. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle, I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. In Zion, go ahead. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power, and I took root in an honorable people. Pull back up the definition of honorable. Definition of honorable. Uh, honorable people. Let's read it. Deserving of respect or high regard. Deserving of honor. Of great renown illustrious, entitled to honor or respect. A you great renown, entitled to honor or respect. Uh, score down. Let's see the next one. Read number three. Definition number three. Performed or accompanied with marks of honor or respect. Uh, number five. Characterized by integrity, guided okay. by a keen sense of duty and ethical conduct. Mm like those definitions. So we are supposed to be an honorable people. All right, Jeremiah 2.21. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 21. 
Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, uh -huh. holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine? So, go ahead. Unto me. So us following our own thoughts is what made us a strange and degenerate plant and turned us from an honorable people into a base people like we are on the face of the earth, only recognized really in the wickedness that we do. Um, give me that in Ezekiel uh, 16. Let's read 6 through 14. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16 and verse 6. 6. Yep. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood. This is, this, you could bring this up for today. We polluted in our own blood, downtrodden, the enslaved, um, the less desirable, the oppressed. Disenfranchised is another word they use for it. Read on. I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy, thy blood, uh -huh. live. Live. Yea, Go ahead. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. That's when God began to give us the understanding, give us the commandments back to make us live, to give us the, the mind to hear the word that we could begin to meditate on it and then come back to life. That's for today. Even like it was then, the same is to now. Read on. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked still and Still working on that hair growing for the sisters. We still working on that. The Lord has not, only when they repent, still working on that. I pray you sisters get to that. Read that again. Verse 7, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Uh -huh. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Then washed I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Uh -huh. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger's skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. All right, note to self, uh, those that don't like reading, we're going to do some reading today. So get your spirit right. Read on. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thou wast thou decked with gold and silver mm -hmm. and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil and thou wast exceeding beautiful and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Uh -huh. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Read. For it was perfect. Through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. That, we got to definitely get back to that. And the only way you're going to get back to understanding that our beauty is perfect is when you realize you Israel. Because there's so much in the world that tells you that you're not beautiful with all the, the, uh, the commercials, the magazines, the movies. Only way you're going to realize that the beauty that you have is perfect is when you realize that you're an Israelite and, and that you man, you made in the image of God and you women are made in the image of God's and you don't have to desire the beauty of the other nations. They should desire your beauty, which they do in a sense and they make money off of it. But then you turn around and desire theirs, which don't make no money. In the eyes of God, God does he he uh, uh, he says that it's unclean, it's not desirable. That's why he gave them no color. That's why he gave them dead hair, unclean hair. It's undesirable to him. All right, read on. Verse fifteen. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and place the harlot because of thy renown and poured out thy fornications. On everyone that passed by. Uh, read verse 14 again. Verse 14. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Saith the Lord God. So that honor that we was reading about earlier, it was envied by all. 
when they saw the way, it wasn't just the way we looked, but it was actually when we opened our mouth, the people saw or heard wisdom like they've never heard before. That's why um, when Solomon ruled, and he was king, all nations came up to him to learn. And it was no wisdom for you Egyptologists that nobody on the earth desired but Solomon's. Where is that at? First Kings 4, I believe it is. You going to say something real quick? Also? Yeah, I was just going to mention, uh, I'm going to go back to the, the appearance yeah. part, right, in terms of where it says in verse 14 that it was perfect being the beauty that we had was through, through God's comeliness, right? Real quick, go to Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, chapter 13 and verse 3. Where do we get that beauty from? Because like you said, I mean, we, as Israelites, we understand that our beauty comes from the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Just the same way as when we look at each other, we look at black men, we see the woolly hair. God has all of that. Yep. The dark skin, God has all of that. But why is it that we're bleaching our skin, putting uh, different color hair in our head, different color uh, eyes and our uh, uh, extended eyelashes and all of this. Snuffleupagus eyelashes. Where did our beauty come from? Read that. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. Uh -huh. For the first author of beauty hath created them. So the first author of beauty is the Most High God. Yeah. He gave you his comeliness his beauty. So that's why when we tell sisters, you don't need to put the weave in your hair, sis. You don't need to be putting blonde hair in your head. You don't need to blonde your hair. Brothers, because bro, see brothers doing that now too. Yeah. You don't need to have one side black, one side brown. No. Nah. God had woolly hair. Mm -hmm. Love your woolly hair. Love what God gave you. That's right. Uh, go to that in First Kings chapter 4. Talking about that, that wisdom was renowned. Right? which made us an honorable people. Uh, read 1 Kings 4, and let's start at 30. Let's get straight. Let's read 29 and 30. 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country uh -huh. and all the wisdom of Egypt. So all of that, because Egyptologists do be like, oh, man, that's the, the Bible's plagiarized. It's the 42 negative confessions of my God. And you hear Amen Tetan, Tetan, Tetan coming and all of that. The Hammurabi codes, all of even when all of that was out before Solomon was even born, all the nations bypassed Egypt and came to Solomon. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We hear what y'all saying with them hieroglyphs. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheba, Sheba passed Sheba Egypt. Sheba came, came right from, up. <laughs> came from Ethiopia. Passed Egypt. Stopped in Egypt, looked at the at the stuff around there. Like, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, this ain't it. Yeah, I'm on this my way to it. Jerusalem, y'all. Thank you. Let's keep going. Let's keep, Let's keep, keep going. going. That wisdom, these laws, these commandments is what made us an honorable people, wiser than any people that is on the face of the earth. Go back to Ezekiel 16. Now read verse 15. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 15. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and placed the harlot because of thy renown and poorest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. So we then began, what happened is we began to trust in our own understanding, our own beauty. And those are the things that began a, a, a century, well, decades, centuries, millennial long process of us being turned into that degenerate plant. Went from being honorable and noble in the sight of everyone into a degenerate plant that nobody desires anymore. Only for entertainment or for lustful purposes. That's when they want the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians around. The anxiety is nobody that looks like them. That's when they desire because we left off from that knowledge. Uh, go back to Jeremiah. Yeah. just want to touch on where it says, it uh, poured out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. Real quick, go to Wisdom of Solomon. I don't know if you're going to bring that out, Cap. Wisdom of Solomon 14. No, I ain't got none of that. All right. 
real quick. This is to show you what that fornication was. That fornication was idolatry, right? The gods of the, the idols of the other god of the other nations. Uh, fourteen twelve. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen and verse twelve. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Right. That's the spiritual fornication. That's the playing the harlot that we read in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 15. That's us going after other gods, the gods of the other nations. Read on. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. And that's how we, that's how we became a degenerate plant and went further and spiraled further and further away from the Most High into the bottomless pits of us being the, the disenfranchised, the ones that only are sought for for entertainment purposes mm -hmm. only, for the lust of the other nations. That's because we went hard after the other gods of the other nations. Right. Now go to that Jeremiah 2, and this is going to say it right here. Jeremiah 2, let's read verse 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 10. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see. And send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? Yeah, that's other nations. They stay true to Buddha. Uh, Ishmael stayed true to that rock. Esau stays true to Odin. Odin, right? Thor. You know how they they do that? They just they stay true to to them. They make up characters, Marvel characters, to keep those idol gods alive in modern day time because they know who they are that's why god said ask has a nation changed their god which are yet no gods they made up they ain't even real it's a figment of their imagination but they believe it so wholeheartedly that they will continue it on for generations to generations thousands of years read it again verse 11 yes sir verse 11 hath the nation changed their gods which are yet no gods but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Which does not profit. Read on. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The fountain of living waters. And hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Meaning that we have, we have carved out lies. We had we justify the lies that we've learned and we make it our own. That's what it said. It can't hold no water because we find that out every week. Hell, every almost every day on Clubhouse. It ho it literally holds no water when the Bible gets pulled out and prove it. Here's this scripture. Read. It holds no water. The lies that we justify to make ourselves uh, feel good in honoring these other gods. Now read verse 14. Verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Uh, read that. Read on. Why is he spoiled? God is asking, why is Israel, why is Israel on the bottom? They're the greatest people. They're the most honorable people on the face of the earth. Wisdom, when, when I gave it to, because Israel was the last nation created. All the other nations had a certain level of wisdom. We're not negating that fact. We just read that in uh, First Kings, right? When Solomon became king, Egypt was already established as a nation. They was the superpowers of the earth. All of those, Moab had its own land. Edom had a, 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 a land already. All the nations had, Japheth had their own land already, Right? But none of them, none of them, their wisdom made them honorable in the eyes of God. And wisdom, once Israel was created as a nation, God said, rest with those people right there. But why is he a homeborn slave? Why has he been brought so low? Why is he on the bottom when he's the most honorable people to ever walk the face of the earth? His history is the best-selling book for the longest. We're going to get to that, too, in a little bit. You're right about that. Um, give me that in Daniel chapter 9. These are things, because remember, today's class is called the Spirit of Correction. We're going somewhere with this, but just think of what we're doing. Precept upon precept. Pick up what the Lord's putting down. All right. Read Daniel. We I think let me see. Let me check his chapter. Because remember, I said if you don't like reading, 
And you one of them uh, Sabbath day only uh, Israelites that only read your Bible on the Sabbath days. And you say uh, you wore out because your job. So you can't read during the week. You make that excuse. You're going to get your field today, buddy. Read that. Daniel chapter 9. We're going to read most of this. Yep, about half his chapter. Bring Daniel chapter 9, and let's read verse 1. The book of Daniel chapter 9 and verse 1. That's why I wanted to start on time, tech team. All right, I'm done. I'm, <laughs> I'm done being pissed at y'all, but I just wanted to remind y'all. All right, read Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus. Y'all make sure Officer Jakim don't fall asleep back here. I know it's early. That brother is known to sleep while standing up. At camp. At camp, I heard. <laughs> Read that, verse 1. Verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Read. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications, with fastings and sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said. Now listen to what he said. Read. O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. If you need a precept to understand what it means to love God, there you go. Daniel chapter 9 verse 4. That's another one. Read on. We have sinned. And we have committed iniquity mm -hmm. and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts. Hold on. We did what? And have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts. We rebelled from God's precepts. Read on. And from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, uh -huh. and to all the people of the land. O Lord. Righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, uh -huh. to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28, 16, 19, 1492. The uh, uh, Spanish Inquisition, the uh, Arab slave trade, the, the Indian Ocean slave trade. All that's us right there, verse 7. Read on. Verse 8. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Uh -huh. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Though we what? Though we have rebelled against him. Though we have rebelled against him. Read on. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his, his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Uh -huh. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges, that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Uh -huh. For under the whole heaven hath not been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. That's why when you, when you research slavery, it is talking about you and you... You can't you have to dig deep into the annals of history to find out that um the damn uh who's that what's that dude's name? Um it was a show. What's some Chinese people name? Uh Mongoloids, that's what they call them. The Mongols. You got to dive deep in the annals of history to find out that the Mongols was uh, in servitude to their brother, the Xing Shang Yongs, for 60 days. But when it comes to us, all you got to gook slavery, boop, black people, Hispanic people, it's talking about us. They remind you every, every, every February. Week, every February. Every February they remind you. You know what's crazy too, Cap? We read before where it says uh, our kings, our princes, our forefathers, uh, they were all of confusion of face. We say today, our people say today, well, why would God do that to his people if if he loved them so much, oh, if he man. had them so close? Yeah, It yeah. says it right here. 
because we have sinned against him. Hey, we fell off an of IUIC classroom. Just to let you know. But we're on Classroom 2. If you don't know, we on switch over to IUIC Classroom 2, all right? But, yeah, you're right. Exactly right. Uh, go back and read verse 13 now. We're reading down to 14. Yes, sir. Verse 13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord, our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. We obeyed not his voice. We rebelled. That's what brought us to that uh, uh, degenerate plant. That's why we are home-born slave. That's the reason why, because we continue to rebel even unto this day. We continue to rebel. Give me that definition of re rebel. And and this definition shows that we justify that revolting, that rebellion. Hey, uh, you got to drop it off the screen? Yeah. Um, rebel and go to verb because you see that's the definition. Now go down. That's the noun and the verb. It's the action of it. Let's Let's read that. Definition of rebel. Number one. To oppose or disobey one in authority or control. Who have we disobeyed? <laughs> Who have we rebelled against that's in authority and control of our every single breath, every single heartbeat, every single blink of our eye? The Most High God. We have rebelled against him. We oppose him. We disobey him that's in authority. Read, yeah, we're going to keep reading. Read B, read all of them. To renounce and resist by force the authority of one's government. To renounce and resist by force. And the, and the crazy thing about us being rebels, we don't have no power against God and we still do it. We think we really hurting God by us trying to live our best life, being rebels. I was like, oh, I, I, got, I got something for you then. Read on. To act in or show opposition or disobedience. To read that again? To act in or show opposition or disobedience. Uh huh. To read the feel, next one. Yeah. To feel or exhibit anger or revulsion. Or revulsion. Yeah, that's th those two last ones is what we see on Clubhouse on a daily basis. Yeah. Daily basis. Rebels. Rebels. And don't even know it. Making them a home-born slave. You know, you know what that mean? I mean, you gonna be born here. Your your dad gonna kids gonna be born here. Your your grandparents gonna be born here. And hell, I'm gonna bring you back, and you gonna be born here again in the same place you was born in in your last life. You a home-born slave? Why are you brought so low, honorable people? Cause you rebel constantly against God. Uh, go back to that definition, and I want to go to the thesaurus of it. It should be up there. Let's see if you can find it. Yep, there you go. Synonyms. No, you got to click it. There we go. Read that. Given to resisting authority or another's control. Is that, let me see if that's all I want on that. Uh, scroll down. Scroll down. Let's see if we got anything on it uh right there words related to rebel <laughs> read that non-cooperative non-cooperative blacks hispanic you black and brown i'm saying black i can't keep saying all that. black and brown people we are non-cooperative hard to get along with hard to work with read on uncooperative Damn, what's i don't even know what's the difference between non-cooperative and uncooperative what's the difference <laughs> Read on. Insurgent. Uh-huh. Mutinous. Mutinous. You, you try to always overthrow God. Read on. Adamant. Adamantine. Dogged. Hard-headed. Hard-headed. Headstrong. Uh-huh. Immovable. Implacable. Inflexible. Oof. Man, these some good words. Go ahead. Mulish. I don't even know what that means. Negativistic. Negativistic. Mulish is uh, like a donkey. Like a mule. Oh, yeah. mulicious. Man, that's us. That's what makes us a home-born slave. Rebelling constantly. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 
Deuteronomy chapter 9, and I want you to read 1 through 7. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 1. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go and to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak. Okay, if you if you don't know what Deuteronomy is, uh, it, dut means do like duo, right? So um, it is the second uh, law, basically. It means that Moses is rehearsing to us everything that we've went through for the last 40 years, walking around in circles around the same mountain. He's he is rehearsing to us all that we have done before we enter in to the land that was promised to our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right now, read verse three, verse three. Understand, therefore, this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Read on. Speak not thou in thine heart after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Read. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart. So he's letting you know, don't think it's because of you for the uprightness of your heart, trying to think you holier than thou. Read on. Dost thou go to possess their land? But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read on. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness. For thou art a stiff-necked people. We are a stiff-necked people. Rebels. Stiff-necked. Read on. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. We've been what? Rebellious against the Lord. The day, do you know what that means? The day when he killed all of the uh, Egyptian children and, you was, and we was forced out. We was, we had people... As we leave it, man, I don't know why we got to go. Why we got to leave so Why fast? we got to leave, man? Why we, can't we bring nothing with us? Why, man, we can't wait on the bread to, to, to get leavened? Oh, we got to eat it flat, unleavened bread? Oh, man, I guess I'll go. <laughs> why Moses got to talk like that to us? That's, what, that's literally what we had. We ain't children. <laughs> man, oh, my we can't goodness. wait till the morning, man. I'm tired, man. It's late at night. God says, since the day you came out of Egypt until the day we entered the promised land. To this, to this day. He said, you've been rebellious. Wow. Read on. Verse 8. Also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. Uh -huh. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Read on. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. For thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Uh -huh. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They've made them a molten image. Made a molten image. Quickly we did that turn from God. Read. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. It's a stiff-necked people. Quickly. Moses only gone 40 days. Quickly they went and changed their God for other gods. That's why Jeremiah, and what nation does that? 40 days. They was like, give us somebody else. Give us another way of life. Pull up the definition of uh, stiff-necked. Read that for us. Uh, stiff-necked, okay. You can read them. Read those real quick. Definition of stiff-necked. Haughty, stubborn, formal, stilted. Now click on haughty. Let's just see what those mean. Stiff-necked, haughty. Let's read it. Because we don't look these words up. Uh, what is that? Haughty, 
blatantly and disdainfully proud. Oh, that's what it is right there. <laughs> that's us in a nutshell, blatantly and disdainfully proud. You ain't got nothing to be proud about, but just, we proud. No, one, so no, I don't care. You know we on the bottom. We uh, Our wealth is like one-tenth of white people. It don't matter. I got Jordans. I got rims. Look at this candy paint on this. Uh, 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 what would we be riding in? It, Cat- it's 2004 <laughs> Impala. <laughs> Look at that candy paint on this 2004 Impala with these 32-inch rims. Right. Right, that 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 used to be a big thing down here. Yeah. People have uh, the the M M&M and M drawings and stuff like yes. that on the candy paint on a Ford Escort, sitting on twenty six inch rims, and live in the hood, and live in the worst, worst part of the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> Disdainfully proud. Go back to that. Go back to it. Got finished reading that. What stiff neck means? You, they they upgraded now though, Cap. Now they got the wraps. They put a oh gu- yeah yeah. You put a Gucci, Gucci or Louis Vuitton wrap on your or your uh, 2012... And don't own none Kia. of that stuff. <laughs> don't own no damn Gucci at all. It's fake. Uh, yeah, read that definition again. Haughty. Blatantly and disdainfully proud. Having or showing an attitude of superiority Ooh. and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. That's us. Haughty, man. On the bottom and we haughty. Go back and I want you to click the definition of they should, they should have a uh, picture. stubborn. Oh, they should have a picture picture of black people right there next to that definition. (laughs) Black and brown people. Go back. Go back. Go back. All you had to do is click back. Yep. Take the That easy. Back button. That's all you had to click. Yep. That's all you had to click. Click it. All right. Definition of stubborn. Scroll down so we can see it. Refusing to change your ideas or to stop doing something. Oh! Look, I said, I've seen these people. How drop you could drop it. I want you to understand this. Uh what's that verse? I gotta keep move on. We got a lot, but look at this. It says uh read verse 13 again. Verse 13. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. How did how has God seen this people? How he seen already that we are pull back up that definition real quick? How did he see? That we were, where, where's the the stubborn? stubborn? Come on, man, stay with me. That's y'all. what the tech team is. Come on, stubborn, stubborn. <laughs> Read that. Refusing to change your ideas or to stop doing something. How did God see that already? Isaiah forty six and ten. <laughs> How did God say, "I seen this people, Moses"? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a people that are going to be refused to change. They're going to be on the bottom. They're going to be in the worst conditions. And they are going to make, uh, what's the term we say? They're going to make lemonade out of uh, GMO lemons. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. I'm telling you because of this. Read that. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times the things that are not yet done. That's why God said, I've seen this people already, Moses. I'm telling you, there's going to be a stubborn people that refuse to change, disdainfully proud they're going to be. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9. Let's read verse uh, 13. What? No, we're going to read verse 14 on down now. Let's read 14. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 14. And look what happens when we are disdainfully proud and refuse to change. Look what God's first thought is. Read that. Let me alone, that I may destroy them. Kill them. Kill them all. That's, that is God's first thought when we are disdainfully proud and refuse to change. Read on. And blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. And, and, the, and newsflash, God's thought on that ain't changed. He still, you still got a whole lot of rest in peace shirts around here. Um, it's a video. It's too graphic to play, but it just happened in Puerto Rico. Drive by shooting. Ephraim killing each other. And 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 how, the, like you said, it's graphic. But the thing about it is, is how how eager they were to make sure that their own people, their own brothers, were put to death. Yeah, yeah. They got out the car, came back, and shot them again. But that, that's that, God's first thought when we stubborn. Yeah. Yep. 
stiff necked, he'll make th- things will happen. He create evil. Read on. So I turned and came down from the mount, and the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, he had sinned against the Lord your God, and it made you a molten calf. He had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first, forty days and forty nights. Uh-huh. I did I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins, which he sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So Moses didn't eat for 40 days or 40 nights for what we did. He didn't do nothing wrong. It's for what we did. He stopped eating, right? Fasted and did what? And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins, which he sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Uh huh. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. That let you know right there that Moses was a great man. Moses, Moses didn't have to do what he did, but he said, Lord, these be your people. Don't do what you about to do to them and start over with me. Cause God's first thought and he none because he saw the beginning, the middle and the end of times. Moses saw all of that and he know what God can do. So he said, Lord, 40 days, 40 nights, please don't destroy them. Have mercy on they rebel yourself. Moses was a great man. Um, give me that in um give me that Sirach 44 real quick. I'm gonna show you this. Let's talk about Moses being a great ancestor of ours. These are things that we gotta meditate on. Get some pride in yourself. Not the kind that make you rebel against God, though. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Confidence. 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 There you go. There you go. Confidence. Oh, there you go. Look at that. That's a little bit. Sirach 44, verse 1. Sirach chapter 44 and verse 1. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. We know. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Uh-huh. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meat for the people. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Read on. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. That would be Solomon, David, uh, Asaph, right? But what I want out of verse 1, it says, let us praise famous men. Is what you mentioned earlier, Officer Judah, that our ancestors are the most famous people on the face of the earth. This, the, our, our ancestors are so uh, famous that they've been whitewashed. Yes. Uh, they've been plagiarized. They've been pulpit pimped. All of that because all the world desires to be like the man that we descend from. Honorable man, famous man, known throughout all the earth. Moses' name is translated into whatever language they know about. Mo, you say Mo, you, you they. Uh, what is that? Um, um, like uh, these entertainers and stuff, Jay Z right, right, and LeBron, right. and they be going all over the earth, and people are like who? Who you talking about, LeBron? Uh, I don't know. You say Moses, be like yeah, yeah, we know Moses. Is it Musa? Moses. Yes, yeah, Moses. Moshe. Moshe. Yeah, we know. Moshe. We know him. We got the most famous ancestors on the face of the earth. Now jump down to verse chapter 45 and read verse 1 about Moses. Sirach chapter 45 and verse 1. And he brought out of him a merciful man. A merciful man was Moses. Read on. Which found favor in the sight of all flesh. Uh Uh-huh. Even Moses, beloved of God and men, whose memorial is blessed. His memory is blessed. Read on. He made him like to the glorious saints and magnified him so that his enemies stood in fear of him. Read. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease, and he made him glorious in the sight of kings and gave him a commandment for his people and showed him part of his glory. He sanctified him in his faithfulness and meekness and chose him out of all men. God, Moses was so, so great that he contended with God on behalf of his people. 
Who else you know that would do that? Contend with God on behalf of his people when they was just ready to stone him over water and food. They wanted to go back to the oppression, and Moses said, Lord, don't do it to him. How great of a man was Moses our ancestor was? That's why it says, let us praise famous man. Chosen out of all men all over the earth, that lets you know it was something special about Moses that God saw in him that he can deal with 600,000 people for 40 years. You know how great that is? Wait, wait, wait. 600,000 rebellious people. Rebellious people. people For 40 years. For 40 years that wanted to kill him, stone him and his brother, go back to the oppression, murmured against him, tried to overthrow him, everything under the sun. And Moses said, Lord, block my name out of the book of life if it comes to dealing with them. If you don't forgive them, take my take my eternal life away from me so they can have it. That's a great man right there. That's a faithful and meek man. Right That's there. a great man. Take my he, take my eternal life. Man, that's heavy. That's our story. Meditate on that. Yeah, that's our story. He's a merciful, merciful man. <sighs> Taken out of these people. Beyond what we can people. understand. Take my eternal life from me, God, and give it to the 600,000 rebellious people that you brought out of Egypt. Dang. That, that's a servant of the Lord. That's right a, pull, pull up the death. Pull up that image from Josephus. This is why in the book of Josephus it says this. Uh, pull it up. And this is what we, you, you fathers, you mothers, you Leaders. have to instill this in our children every day. Read that uh, for a soldier. Nay, indeed, the law does not permit us to make festivals at the births of our children. We ain't supposed to celebrate birthdays. Read on. And thereby afford occasion of drinking. Because you, you only use it for an uh, excuse to get drunk. Get drunk right. Just like they did back then, we still do the same thing. I'm getting lit tonight is what you say. What's the other one? Uh, before the child's born? The, the baby shower? The baby shower. Yep, no baby showers either. You can't get toe up from the flow up. That's a Judah word right there. Judah saying. Read on. But it ordains that the very beginning of our education the should be. The very beginning. Read. Should be immediately directed to sobriety. Why? Because you are honorable people. Now, ain't nobody supposed to look down on you and think less of you. No, not you honorable people where wisdom said, where God told wisdom, dwell amongst those people right there. Read on. It also commands us to bring those children up in learning and to exercise them in the laws and make them acquainted with the acts of their predecessors. The acts of their who? Of their predecessors. The acts of their ancestors. You want to teach your kids how to love his people? Show them the history of Moses where he, want, he was willing to give up his eternal life for his people. Make them acquainted with that acts of their predecessors, their ancestors. Read that whole part again. It also. It also commands us to bring those children up in learning and to exercise them in the laws and make them acquainted with the acts of their predecessors in order to their imitation of them. To imitate their ancestors. To hell with being like LeBron. To hell with being like Obama. To hell with being like damn uh, Tavis Smiley and damn uh, uh, what's that other dude's name? Uh, Michael Eric Dyson. Michael Eric Dyson and damn, uh, to hell with trying to be like Frederick Douglass. Right. To hell with trying to be like uh, Martin Luther King. Yeah, to hell with yeah. trying to be like Marcus uh, uh, Garvey. Mar Marcus to hell with trying to be X. like Malcolm X. Because yep. think about it. In these Christian churches or in any religion that our people are involved in, how much do they really teach you about your ancestors? None. They don't dive into it like that. Not, not like that. Especially not like going into the scriptures and seeing the, 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 up, the, the, the pros and the cons of the wrongs and the rights that our forefathers did. Right. And how they were corrected from the wrongs that they had to do and how we're supposed to correct our actions. There you go. Go back to that. Go back to that. And read that one more again. It also. Read it all the way through. Zoom out some. Is, zoom out some. It also. There you go. Go ahead. It also commands us to bring those children up in learning and to exercise them in the laws and make them acquainted with the acts of their predecessors in order to their imitation of them and that they may be nourished up in the laws from their infancy and might neither transgress them. 
from their infancy, nourish them up in the laws and the history of their people. So how is it that you have these pastors nowadays that are saying that you don't need the laws? What what do you teach your children? What the um how to damn uh twerk? Yeah. <laughs> you ought to be on a twerk team in the church. How to, yep, that's it. Learn all the presidents. Learn all the white presidents and don't know nothing. Don't even know the Ten Commandments, but learn all the white presidents and what uh amendments they passed. It's crazy. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter nine. Let's read twenty through twenty four real quick. Deuteronomy chapter nine and verse twenty. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also the same time. And I took your sin, the calf which he had so made. So he prayed for Aaron as well. Go ahead. And I took your sin, the calf which he had made, and burnt it with fire and stamped it and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount. And at Tabara and at Masa and at Kiproth Hatava. Ye provoked the Lord to wrath. Mm -hmm. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Nor hearkened to his voice. Read on. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. From the day that I knew you, we've been rebellious. From the day, since the day that Moses came back from being gone. Right? On the other side of the way, he came back. Rebellious since that day. Pull up that, that video that, that I got. <laughs> We've been saying it off show, but this is how God has to be sitting in the heavens, looking down on, on us and saying, he gotta, his face got to look like this with this passion and emotion. Can you pull it up for us? It's the short. It's the YouTube short. Bring it up. Play that. This day. Turn it up. To this day. To this day. <laughs> Read it. Play it again. This day. Belly. To this day. To this day. Rebellious. <laughs> One more time. Come on, man. Stay with me. I'll tell you where to drop it. This day. Get ready to, to pause day. it. I'll tell you where to pause it. To this day. Pause it. <laughs> That's it right there. It looked like God, these yeah. damn rebellious ass people, man. To this day. To this day. <laughs> Talking to the angels. They've been rebellious. They're just rebellious. They just don't, don't want to get it. They don't want to turn. They don't want to. Can't get right. Damn. When you go, we, we, from, you, you leave this life, you go up and Lord say, you know what? You was rebellious. From the time out. To this day. <laughs> You ain't won't die. That's the way he's looking. I'm gonna send your ass back as a cripple. Right, right, right. Paraplegic, something crazy. Read that again. Deuteronomy nine twenty four. Deuteronomy chapter nine and verse twenty four. Man, you have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. From the day that I knew you, that's been who we are. So those that always read the Bible and like, who is these rebellious people? It's us. <laughs> Look out into the earth. Who's the rebellious people on the earth that don't obey, that always got a, a argument with everything? That's us. Uh, Hosea chapter 13. Sir, you know you know you ran the light. Um, you was going eighty in a uh, forty mile an hour zone. Uh, that's why I pulled you over. You can't even see the signs. The high, signs was hiding behind a tree. Why? You, what's going on? Look at they was going eighty two. You didn't get them. them. Your tail, you know, your tail light is I out. Well, did, damn it, them kids was throwing rocks over there where I live. That is the kids' fault. Don't blame me. Can you let me off? Officer, how long has your tail light been out? Six months. Oh. <laughs> That's us. Hosea 13, read one through three. Hosea chapter 13 and verse one. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. He died. Read on. And now they sin more and more. And have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understandings. That's spiritual fornication. Yep. There you go. Uh, read on. 
All of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Read. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. So for all for that sin and those that rebellion, we continue to die more and more. And then we've been punished to where it says like the dew that passeth away. We just vanish off the face of the earth. For our rebellion, first it happened to northern kingdom. That's why I went here. This is Ephraim is the head tribe of the northern kingdom, the Hispanics and Native Indians. Sinned and died more and more and more. But that destruction that God has destroyed us with has been so um, etched in history that for centuries people have still referred to it when they talk about the worst things done on the face of the earth. You, you wonder, a lot of times people ask, well, what happened to the Mayans? What happened to the Aztecs? What happened to the Incas? Mm -hmm. This is what happened to them. This is what, right. This is it right here. We would, we would uh, it says, as the early dew that passes the way, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. We, that millions of people. Yep. These are great civilizations wiped off the face of the earth. So, so that, that rebellion that we have been known for since the day that Moses met us, it has caused us centuries of heartache, millennials of destruction. Starting with the Northern Kingdom first. And I said it's still referenced. Pull up that article of the Chinese government. Pull up that article real quick, the Chinese government. And look, what it, this is how bad the destruction's been. All right, read that for us, soldier. A Chinese government spokesperson said the U.S. committed evil crimes against Native Americans in a bid to counter reports of genocide in Xinjiang. Read it again. A Chinese government spokesperson said the U.S. committed evil crimes against Native Americans in a bid to counter reports of genocide in Xinjiang. In Xinjiang. What it is. All right. A uh, scroll down. All right, read those bullet points. A Chinese spokesperson railed against the U.S. diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics. The U.S. had announced the boycott in response to Beijing's ongoing genocide of the Uyghur minority. Uh -huh. Zhao Lijian fired back by accusing the U.S. of committing evil crimes, uh, evil crimes. against Native Americans. It happened over four, five hundred years ago, and they're still talking about it. That's how bad the rebellion, the uh, the heartache has been for our rebellion against God. 500 years, 600 years ago, they still talking about it, how bad it was. And we're still rebellious. And we're still rebellious. Go to the other uh, article. Please drop the other stuff. All right. Can you read that? Governor apologizes for Nevada's role in indigenous schools. In indigenous schools. Go to the next image. We're going to get straight to the point of what it's talking about. Read that. Since children's remains were discovered at a residential school in Canada, tribes both there and in the United States have pushed the government to acknowledge the enduring effects of policies that Pennsylvania boarding school founder Richard Pratt described in the 19th century as kill the Indian, save the man. That's what it was. That was the whole monk moniker, right? Go ahead. Native children as young as four were forcibly taken from their families and sent to off-reservation boarding schools. Their hair was cut. They were converted to Christianity. Converted to what? To Christianity. There you go. You Hispanics, Native Americans, you should not be in the religion of Christianity. It was forced on you by your slave masters where they said, kill the Indian, save the man. Kill, kill your original natural identity. Yep. Your spiritual identity and save the man. The man now is the, so, is the white man that right. they're going to be putting into your mind. Yep. Read on. And they were prohibited from speaking their native languages. They were often subjected to military-style discipline. And until reforms in the mid-20th century, curriculums focused heavily on vocational skills and for girls' homemaking. Go to the next one, next image. 
Read that. Historians say many of the schools were overcrowded. Physical abuse was widespread, and many students died and were buried in unmarked graves. Remember, this is for our rebellion. This is the centuries of heartache and pain it's caused us. Go ahead. Tribal leaders believe children were secretly buried somewhere on the campus of the Stewart School, but have not yet decided whether to dig up and repatriate bodies back to their homes mm. or to honor them by leaving them in the ground as is custom for many tribes, including the Shoshone in New Mexico, Utah, and elsewhere. Researchers are using ground-penetrating radar to search for remains. Wow. Go ahead. Sisolak said it would be tribal leaders' decision how to investigate the history. Investigate. That's the rebellion. That's the centuries of heartache. Starting with Northern Kingdom first for our rebellion. Go to Lamentations chapter 1. Lamentations chapter 1, and let's read 3 through 5. Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 3. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction. Because of affliction. Judah would be you blacks, Haitians, Jamaicans, right? The Caribbean islands. That's who we will be. Judah. Read on. And because of great servitude, she dwell, dwelleth among the heathen. She dwells among the heathen. God refers to us as a woman because that's who he's married to. Jeremiah 6 and 2. You can read it on your own time. Go ahead. The children and the suckling swoon. No, in the read, a, read a verse again. You missed... No, I, Lamentations. Verse, verse 3. Yeah. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude, she dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. Read on. The ways of Zion do mourn, because none come to the solemn feasts. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted, and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Uh -huh. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. We've gone from captivity to captivity to captivity because of our sin. Go to Isaiah chapter 1. And it's not hard to see why. Because of the multitude of our transgressions. Multitude. Rebellious. Yeah. Isaiah 1. And let's read 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Uh -huh. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. He nourished us, and we did what? And they have rebelled against me. you got to be out your mind crazy to rebel against the king of terrors. That's us, though. You got to be out your, what they say, your ever-loving mind to rebel against the king of terrors. Has not his track record proved he will kill you? He yeah. killed everybody in the beginning. Right. I mean, you know, you hear the history coming down from the flood about this guy. You see what happened in Egypt with yeah. the firstborn in Egypt. You see what happened to the nations that came against you when you read in the book of Judges and that history. But then you still rebel against this God. Still. And he's the king of terrors. They should bring Damn. it out all the time. Um, what's that? Um, El Shaddai yes. means yes. The, the demon like, terrible God. Right. You got to be out your ever-loving mind to rebel against him. Like, what's his name? But we do that. The demon-like power? Why would you want to go against that? What is wrong with you? Go back to that. Isaiah Rebellious. chapter 1, verse 3. Man. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Uh -huh. All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Mm -hmm. They are gone away backward. backward. Read. Why should he be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. 
They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So it's from, from the southern kingdom, head tribe, Judah, all the way to the bottom uh, of the northern kingdom, the Naphtali on the tribe chart. All of us are sick. All of us are rebellious since the day that God has known us. We all have been rebellious. Pull that, what's, pull that video up again. One more time. Play it one more gear. <laughs> That what that's what that means. It says they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Means this right here. Play it. This day, to this day, to this day, we've been stiff-necked and rebellious. We our wounds have not been mollified with ointment. They haven't been closed up. Um, go, jump up to verse twenty-one. Verse 21, how is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murder. Now, these are the ways that we have been rebellious against God. He's going to mention our resume to us oh, man. of what we did to no longer reside in our homeland of Jerusalem. You might have been born in Alabama. You might have been born in New York. You might have been born in damn Virginia, born in Texas, born in Alaska, wherever it might be. That ain't your homeland. That ain't where you're from. You uh, got to mention this one. Born in Haiti. Born in Jamaica. You might have been born there, but that ain't your homeland. Your, your place Jump back over to verse 7. This is what's happening to our place. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Your country is desolate. Our country's desolate. It ain't green like it used to be with the garden, like the Garden of Eden. It's a desert land. Read. Your cities are burned with fire. Babylon burned them. Your land. Strangers devour it in your presence. Strangers are now living in our land. Defiling it. Defiling it because... We have been rebellious. Jump back over to verse 21, and it was full of this. So God said, you got to go. Read on. Verse 21. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Murderers. Go ahead. Damn. Thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious. Our princes are what? Are rebellious. Our leaders are rebellious. Your Al Sharptis, your damn, uh, what's up? What's the other one's name? Uh, uh, Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson's. They, man, we ain't got too many black That's ladies, it. do we? That's it. That's about all you can name. <laughs> wow. And and after that, it becomes who? LeBron. Right. Uh, who Entertainers. else? Entertainers. Uh, yeah. Denzel Washington. Uh, 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 Nicki Minaj. Uh, Car Cardi B Car interviews <laughs> with the president. Because our princes, our leaders, so-called leaders, have been rebellious against God. Read on. And companions of thieves, everyone loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Now, look at that. It says, everyone loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. The thing going on now, following after rewards, and loveth gifts, fornication, rampant. Adultery, rampant. Love it and go after your own fleshly desires to the detriment of, of yourself. Because the kingdom's going to come, but your ass might not be in it because you love gifts and go after your own desires. That goes into the, the so-called spiritual leaders, these Pay pastors. Attention, cameraman. These so-called spiritual leaders, these, these uh, pastors who need thousands of dollars just to show up. Right. I need like seventy five thousand, twenty five thousand, twenty five thousand, just to just, just to show my hand, just to show up. That's the gifts that they love. Um, go back to Isaiah twenty three. So those are the ways we rebel. Read verse twenty four. Verse twenty four. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. So how does God calm down when He's angry when He sees all of this unrighteousness going on? Read the mighty one of Israel. Ah. I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. He put you to death before the day of judgment. All everything that as the king of terrors, he eases himself of his uh, anger 
before the day of judgment so he don't have to get up off his throne too early. Death, 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 drive by, cancer, um, jab, uh, 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 pestilence, right there, earthquakes, floods, famine, all of that. That's how he eases himself of his adversaries that are rebellious and oppose his authority. Uh, go to Deuteronomy. Yep, Deuteronomy 32. Read 22. Down to think is 25. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. In his anger. Go ahead. And shall burn unto the lowest hell. Ooh, dang. I mean, you know what that means? I mean, God, God going to get downright ignorant with you. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, you think you can go uh, go be evil and, and murder and, and, and be full of envy and lust and all, all of that? Oh, I'm going to show you the detriments of those things. I'm going to show you how bad those spirits really can be. Things that you didn't even imagine. Boop, ergo AIDS. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know. Oh, you didn't think. Oh, you thought you just fornicating and living it up and committing adultery. You just thought I was going to let you go with that. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. I got death waiting on you. They gonna find you out on. I, I'm gonna create the social media so you can get ratted out on your adultery, on your fornication, and and, and the, the the husband that's enraged by by the the fornication by the adultery comes home, finds you in the bed, kills you and the person and, and, her, the, and man, the wife. I'm telling you, we seen a video. Of, it was Esau, but it happens to us. It was a video of Esau. His wife was cheating on him. And because he set up a camera in the room and they was in the act of doing the stuff, he bust through that damn door and stabbed him up a few times. The dude was strong enough that he could push him off and run. He, the video cut off before he got done with the wife. I'm going to just say that. Wow. The video cut off before he got done with the wife. But you did see the sheets and everything turn right. a different color. Right. That's, it happens to us too. It happened to uh, uh, Benjamite uh, Captain Barky, uh, uh, one of the, the the DJs, one of the um, you know the the yeah. reggae music yeah. uh, DJs. He got caught in the midst of it, and and the person who uh, the their husband came home, shot him to death, killed him. <laughs> there you go. God ain't playing. That's how he eases himself of his adversaries. Deuteronomy thirty-two twenty-two through twenty-five, verse twenty-two. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Mm -hmm. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust, the sword without, and the terror within shall destroy both the young man young and man the virgin. And the young woman, the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hair. The baby and the old man. Our, our condition has been so bad on the face of this earth that nobody will trade positions with you. Nobody on earth wants to be a black man, Hispanic man, or a native Indian man. When you lay out like, okay, hey, uh, you want to trade places with me? Okay, well, you got to go through this uh, constant oppression. Uh, even if you're rich, you're still a nigga. Um, you ain't going to really have no land. Um, uh, everywhere you go, you're going to be racially profiled. Uh, you're not going to have no peace of mind. Um, your neighborhoods are going to be policed. Um, you're going to have aggressive uh, police. Um, you're going to vote uh, people into office that are going to turn their back on you every single year. Um, you might even have a black president that only is going to give you Obamacare and a burner cell phone. Um, you want all these things and trade with me? No, no, I'm all right. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll stay right over here in Iraq in Istanbul or whatever, <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll take my chances with those bombs hey, that drop. That's what, uh, remember, Chris Rock had that joke. Chris Rock... I think he was asking yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the poor Edomite, the, the, the homeless man. He was like, you want to trade places with me? The homeless? Nah, I think I'll take my chances. He said, I'll right. take my chances. <laughs> no. Nope. That's how bad it's been when God got angry with us for, for us refusing to listen to his word, his laws. 
and accept correction, no nation on earth wants to trade places with you right now. Verse 27. Read Ver 26 on down. Verse 26. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. So the destruction was so bad amongst us that God had to stop the enemy from doing what he was doing to us before the nations was like, yeah. We done this because the nations know who gave them the power to overthrow us because we we physically stronger than them. We smarter than them. We they know who has us on the bottom when they get down to the, the up. The, the um, elites, the yeah. elites know yep. why we on the bottom. The, the common uh, right, trader trash don't know. that, <laughs> Right. They think that, you know, we got shotguns and that's what it is around here. They think that's what keeps them in power. No, the elites know. That it is, it is by the hand of God that we are on the bottom. And there's only so much they can do to even keep us down now in the land of captivity. Where they got to create stuff, glass ceilings, where, yeah, where you can look you up go. to the top. But we can't let you come up here because if we let you go, you'll take over. Right. They, you will take over this they, thing. They're not going to allow 100,000, 144,000 Jay-Zs to just go running around. <laughs> they, they're not going to allow that. Not going to allow that. Because they understand that at, at some point, if you let some of these uh, young, bright uh, 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 yeah. stars get to the point where they're elites, and you get too many of they're them, the they're the going to change the mind of the people. They're going to change the world. Yep. So... God had to stop them from doing that, right? Read on verse 28. Verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Uh-huh. Here's the point. Read that. Oh, that they were wise. Oh, that we was wise. Read. That they understood this. Uh-huh. That they should, would consider their latter end. If we would just consider how bad it would be for us rebelling against God and refusing to receive his correction... Oh, that we would, God said, oh, that they would consider what's going to happen to them. But we did not do that. We didn't consider that. No, nah, didn't think of it at all. We was just living it up. And then we do that now as a people. When things is good, we just keep living it up, living it up, living it up, all to the detriment of the destruction of our spirit, and we don't worry about what is to come. Um, so, with that being said, What's the only thing that can get us back to that wise and honorable people? That's the thing. What's the thing that can get us back to that wise and honorable people? The only thing that can do that is correction. Give me that definition of correction. I want it on Google. Just click the link. I think I already put it up there. Correction is the only thing that's going to get us back to that wise and honorable people. Let's read that. Uh, what correction actually is. Definition of correction. The action or process of correcting something. You know, correcting something, right? And we need that. Hell, we're, we're a degenerate plant. <laughs> a degenerate plant needs water put back in it to grow back in this natural state that God made it when he said it's perfect. Real quick, just a real quick cap. Even in this truth, you got to have the mindset where you always need to be corrected. Oh, you yeah. always got to be changing because there's always that that remember we going through the history we're seeing that we were saved out of our captivity and then we went right back into uh into captivity because of our transgressions so we always have to have that mindset that we're always evolving in terms of applying what's written you hear yep. classes come out you gotta apply what's written you gotta go back and look and compare yourself to what the scriptures is saying, yep. or else you're going to stay stagnant and then eventually regress. You go backwards, like we read. Yep, right. Get even worse. Um, go to that. Back to that. And I want to go down on that uh, page you got. Scroll down. Scroll down. Um, keep scrolling. Yeah, keep scrolling. I want you to click on. Keep scrolling, man. Keep scrolling. Can you scroll a little faster, please? Thank you. People also ask, what is, uh, let me see, what is correction? People also ask, 
Let's see. What is correction? Let's see. Let's click on that and see what it say. What is correction? It's the third one. What That's is correction and examples? Go, that, go down. Read with me, y'all. What is correction and examples? The definition of a correction is a change that fixes a mistake. A change that fixes a mistake. Zoom out. Something's a little too big. Let me zoom out on it. There you go. All or right. a punishment to correct a fault. Correct a fault. Read that again, the definition of it. The definition of a correction is a change that fixes a mistake or a punishment to correct a fault. Now go to Sirach 17. So that's what correction is, a change that fixes a mistake. Sirach 17, I don't want you to read verse 15 and 16. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 15. Their ways are ever before him and shall not be hid from his eyes. All the wrongs that we have done are always before the eyes of God. The angels watch us. That's why they call the watchers. Read on. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshy hearts for stoning. Now, you know what that, that evil from his youth means? In this truth. Why would that from his youth, all of us is given to evil, meaning in this truth? John chapter 3, verse 3. It says, every man from his youth is given to evil. Every one of us in this truth is given to evil. Read it. John chapter 3, and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again. Born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So being born again makes you a what? You are a babe. You're a youth when we come into this truth. And being a youth, we are what? Bound to make mistakes that need corrections, right? We all are. All of us go through that process. And, and it's nothing worse, though, being a babe in his youth and make mistakes and argue back that they did nothing wrong when they clearly did something wrong. That's the worst. That's that's a you know that is that's called that's a juvenile delinquent. They got places for juvenile delinquents that when correction comes, they don't see nothing wrong with what they did. It's right in their eyes. Yeah, go ahead real quick. Get Sirach chapter five and verse two. This this goes into what you're saying also, Cap. You got to think of it too. Like you have people that come into the truth come for a short time, and then they stop coming because they say, well, you know, there's some things I'm going through right now, so I got to take some time off, or I got to sit back and, you know, you know, work on some things before I come back. Here's where you got to work it out at. Right here's where you got to work it out at. Watch Good. this. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 5 and verse 2. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength mm -hmm. to walk in the ways of thy heart. Read. And say not, who shall control me for my works? Read. For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Because that's what that is. That's pride. And the Most High will definitely check you on that. Mm -hmm. So, again, if you're in the truth or you're just learning about the truth or you're just coming in and there's things that you know you need to fix because you see what the scriptures say, the woman shouldn't wear pants, a man shouldn't wear a dress, you shouldn't be putting blonde hair in your head. But you're saying, you know what, before I go there, I'm going to work some things out on my own. No, you can't because you haven't. Yeah. You got to do it here. You got to do it here. Go go, uh, go back to that. Read John 3 and 3 again real quick. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So all of us are actually youth, youths in this truth and we all bound to make mistakes in it they need correction when we do make those mistakes first peter chapter 2 read verse 1 and 2 first peter chapter 2 in verse 1 wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. As newborn what? Babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That you can do what? That you may grow thereby. As born again 
Israelites coming out of the ways that you used to live, you have to desire sincere milk as a newborn, as a youth in the truth of God. We got to, why do we have to desire sincere milk as youth and newborn babes? Read verse one again. Verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. Because as youths, all of these things are in us. How do we know that? We just read in Sirach, every man from his youth is given to evil. All these things are in us. Well, it don't matter how old you are, you're still a youth. When you are born again, you come in, we got these things in us. We have to desire sincere milk in order to get these things out of us. And it's going to take someone that is older than you to see the faults in you and correct those mistakes to make you better, right? Give me that definition of malice. And the reason why we got to be, uh, it take correction for those things to get out of us is because we all grew up living these spirits as a way of life. No matter how old you are, you you all grew up, we all grew up with, with, uh, the spirit of malice, no matter, wherever you live there, don't matter where you grew up with it. You was taught that by the world because the whole world, life in wickedness, is based on that. It's all in your movies. It's all in your music. You was taught that some way, shape, form, or fashion. Give me that definition of uh, malice real quick on Google. Definition of malice. The intention or desire to do evil. Uh-huh. Ill will. Ill will. Go down to people also ask. And uh, click on, what's an example of malice? What is an example of malice? Malice is defined as bad will or the desire to do bad things to another person. An example of malice is when you hate someone uh -huh. and want to seek revenge. And want to do what? Seek revenge. All of us grew up at one time or another wanted revenge on somebody that did something to us. I'm going to get their ass back. It's exactly what you said. I'm going to get them. About uh, the the example, the best example is probably road rage. Yeah, because that's something we go through almost every single day. Yeah. Somebody cuts you off. Oh, I'm a, I'm gonna catch up to him and look at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In some cases, some people catch up to him and start shooting. Go uh, go back to that and uh, read the rest of the state of mind. The state of mind of one intentionally performing a wrongful act, a desire to harm others or to see others suffer. Extreme ill will or spite. We all grew up with that in our spirit. It's all it's it's all of us. Ain't none of us exempt for that. Go to the definition of gal. Cause it said laying aside all malice and gal. I'll just focus on those real quick. Malice and gal. Pull up gal. Definition of guile. Sly or cunning intelligence. Sly or cunning intelligence. Uh, go down to, uh, what I want, go down to, uh, Miriam, go to the Miriam. Yep. Click that. Definition of guile, deceitful, cunning, duplicity. Uh-huh. Number two, stratagem, trick, stratagem or trick. You know, you know why we all have to be corrected from these spirits that right there. If you live in, you can drop that. If you live in big cities that are fast moving, you learn gal all your life, especially if you grew up in the hood. You know what you did? What we did as a people to justify us growing up in gal, we gave it a fancy word and said, I'm a hustler. Right. Nah, you're deceitful, cunning. You grew up in New York. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, you got to know the ways of the street. You grew up in Miami. Hey, you got to know the ways of the street, man. We fast moving around here. Hitting licks. Right. Hitting licks. We move quick around here in, in L.A. and Dallas. Hey, man, you got to, you got to, you can't be, uh, you got to know the streets, man. We, and you know, we all grew up that way. We just gave it a fancy word of saying, I'm a hustler. You always got to, um, hey, man, you ain't got no uh, hustle, no side hustle that you do. I get money out here. And and you know what? You mentioned it earlier, Cap. 
the movies, the music that's that's pushed the most in our communities push that those two particular characteristics, malice and guile. Yep. How to get over on your brother and how to do damage and do do harm to your people. There you go. So we definitely we all need correction from those two spirits as a people coming in. Somebody said Detroit. Yeah, Detroit as well. A Detroit player. Play. I used to say, well, well, say you're a play, player from the Himalayas. He was a hustler. He beguiled people. That's the first time I seen, uh, what they call them, Easter suits? Yeah. That's the first time I seen it was from a, 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 a guy from Detroit. He's a pimp. But he looked like a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> that probably was on the side. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, I don't want to read 17, 18. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge, any malice. Read on. Against the children of thy people. Uh huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. That's the correction that we all need from the spirit of malice. Because it does nothing but what? Destroy a nation. Everybody trying to one up each other. Everybody trying to hustle each other. Everybody trying to uh, pyramid scheme each other. You don't do it to, no, to the other nations. You do it to your people. We grew up with that spirit in us. That's why that milk as a newborn babe, us being in our youth, we need correction from that. Because you'll come in this truth and you'll try to one-up your people. You'll try to uh, um, hustle uh, your people. You'll, you'll, you'll have hatred for your people. And, and you don't even see that the other nations are in your neighborhoods Doing the very same thing. Hating you. Hating you. <laughs> Selling you poison. Bearing, you gr bearing grudges, bearing against, grudges you. against you. Beating you up in the, in the weave store. <laughs> right? They're selling you pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster and all that. Everything to destroy you as a yeah. nation because we have malice for each other. Malice only destroys a nation. Hell, they even selling, they're even giving our people the money to make the music to push the malice right. and the guy. Yep. Jump up to uh, verse 11 and 12. Let me see if I want to read that. No, read verse 13 first. Verse 13. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. Don't hustle your brother. That's what that law is. Don't hustle your brother. Don't beguile your brother. Use trickery or cunnery on him. Don't show up to Black Wall Street with a 25 cent wish ring and put some uh, fingernail polish on it so it don't fade and sell it to your brothers for $35. That is trickery and cunnery. <laughs> hatred. We out here broke. You out here. That's hatred, man. Don't Dang. do those things. That is that's defrauding your neighbor. You robbing him. Jump up to verse 11. Verse 11. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Neither lie one to another. You use gal. Don't use gal in dealing with your people. It destroys a nation. And Give me that Proverbs 14 and 12. Because this is what happened to us growing up with those things. And everybody know your hood ain't no harder than mine. <laughs> we all know. Uh, grew up in those ways. We all know people that live by that. Hell, we even live by that way sometimes in our own life with gal and malice and sly cunningness and trying to be a hustler and hustle and this, that, and the other. Read 14 and 12 and, see, and show what God says about those thoughts. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. It's a way to seem right. In the hoods we grew up in, in the, uh, the upbringing that, that black and brown people got, being a hustler seems right to you. Because we all oppressed. You're just trying to make a dollar and all, uh, rub two nickels together and make a dime. It seems right in beguiling your people and having malice where you only look out for yourself. You get rich or die trying. 
But what? Read. But the end thereof are the ways of death. It destroys you. It brings death. That's why a lot of our people are in the prison system. That's why a lot of people is on rest in peace shirts. Because it brings nothing but death. Go to Hebrews chapter 5. They seem right to the world, but they can't be right to us once we repent. And we are youths, newborn babes, born again in need of correction. Those things can't be right to us no more. Hebrews 5 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, uh -huh. and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. And become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. We need that because we all use. Go to Deuteronomy 6. We need the milk because we all use. Now, watch this. What is this right here? Deuteronomy 6, and uh, read verse 1, and we're going to jump. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. Do the commandments, right? Jump down to verse 6 and 7. Verse 6, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Be in thy mind. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Read on. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So when you desire the sincere milk, and you be retaught again, and you the, what's being taught to you is the commandments of God, you then began to grow as a youth in the truth. You grow spiritually over a period of time, just like it is in your natural life. You grow from the food that you ingest, and it helps your bones to grow strong. You remember that commercial back in the day? Drink a milk does a body good. Is that what it was? Milk does a body good. Now, just think about this. What child have you ever known that grew correctly when they was only drinking milk once a week every other day do you feed a, a newborn babe or a youth do you give them food every other day do you give them milk every other day or do you feed them two three times four times a day every single day throughout their whole entire youth yes you do the same thing with your spirit how can the youthful spirit in you, because you just was born again, how can you grow when you only feed yourself the milk every other day or every Sabbath? Once a day, every Sabbath, two weeks. Oh, I only watch videos. I don't read. I only listen. I don't read. <laughs> how can you grow when you don't read the top part of that again? Verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. When you don't drink milk diligently, how can you expect to grow in the spirit? It won't happen. You'll grow incorrectly. You'll have faults within you. That's what happens. You just have a damn one leg longer than the others. Your head be lopsided. Your arms <laughs> grew a different size. <laughs> you, didn't, you weren't nourished right when you was a youth. And that comes from you because the Bible says what? Study to show thyself approved. approved. Right. Those spiritual deformities, those things grow there into you go. other problems. And eventually you find out, oh, you know what? It just might not be for me. Yep. You wind up falling out of the truth. Oh, I didn't do what I was supposed to right. when I was a youth. And I'm paying for it now as, as in my supposed to be adulthood in the truth. Well, Give me that. Even too, Cap, you get corrected on some of the stuff. And now, then, then, uh, you, then it's like, oh, oh, no. You can't the shortcomings come out. Jump up to verse 20. Verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded now, you? Now, look at that. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come. In time to come means you've definitely made mistakes along the way. And you're growing. 
You've made mistakes. In time to come, you've made mistakes along the way. How else would you be able to grow unless you made the mistakes and were corrected on the things that you did wrong? If you was just left as a child unnurtured, where is that? Give me that in uh, Sirach. This is what happens if you're not corrected along the way in your youth. Uh, you know what I want, uh, Sirach? Might be three, it might be 30. Let's see. Is it 30? Yep. Sirach chapter 30, and let's read verse 8. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 8. And horse not broken becometh headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. A child that is never corrected will be willful to do what? Sin against God. To have malice in his soul, to have guile, to have wickedness, to have all manner of evil within his spirit. If you're left to yourself, so you need the correction as a youth to make sure that you're on the right path, that you can grow up into uh, uh, a mature uh, and full adult in the scriptures, in the spirit. Go back to Hebrews chapter 5 and uh, read verse 13 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So everyone that uses milk is unskillful, meaning what? That we're going to make mistakes that need correcting, because that's where we are. We use, we born again. Ain't none of us bishop. <laughs> ain't none of us deacons. Hell, ain't some of us, some of the higher rank captains. That ain't, that ain't us. We all going to need correction because we all still dealing with the milk. We all drinking the milk. We're going to make those mistakes uh, on our path to becoming adults in this truth. But the problem that we have far too many times is that we forget we babes in the truth. That's the problem. We Because you got, yep, I know you got kids. Yep, I know. I know you got a job. I know you've been on your own since you was 18. Your mama kicked you out your house. When you was 16, you've been out here on the streets by myself all day. One man Hold it down. What job? I know that. But when you repent and become born again, you're a youth no matter how many gray hairs you got. It don't matter to God. But we forget that we are youths, and then what we do? We rebel. We forget that we need correction. Proverbs 29. Proverbs chapter 29 and uh, let's read verse 1. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 1. We are spiritually babes and in need of much correction, but read that. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Read it again. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So because we get carnal and not spiritual, when we get corrected often, we start to reject it. That's what they're saying. He that is often reproved because as a youth, as a child, when you got, everybody, you got kids, what do you have to do with kids? You got to keep telling them the same thing, what? Over and over and over and over again. You as a youth in the truth, you're going to be corrected over and over and over and over again until you get it right. But, Read 29 and 1 again. Verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck. You Just get carnal and not spiritual, you begin to reject the correction. You'll, you'll stand right, you'll hear it. And, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I go now? Okay. You ain't heard nothing. You ain't taking nothing in. Because you forget your youth and the truth. And you're in need of that correction. And it ends up doing what? Shall suddenly be destroyed, uh -huh. and that without remedy. You destroy your own self. When you stop hearing control, you harden your neck, you close your ears to it, it just fall on deaf ears. You forget you're a babe, you're a youth, you're born again, you've only been around three, four, five years, ten years. You're only ten years old, eight years old, and now you think can't nobody tell you nothing because you've been here for seven years? Try that with your seven-year-old child and see what life See where they ass end up when they get 30. See where they end up. You'll be visiting they ass in the damn state correctional facility, right. maximum prison, 
they'll be in juvenile first, <laughs> and then they be in the maximum security prison. You can't stop correcting them just because they're seven. Go ahead. Check this out, Cap. Sirach 22, verse 10. It was exactly to what you just said. Because not only will they, just de de they wind up destroying themselves, but they're also going to destroy your name along with it, too. Mm. Break Watch out this. real quick. Sirach chapter 22 and verse 10. Uh -huh. But children being haughty, being stubborn through disdain and want of nurture, lack of nurture, mm. lack of being corrected, yeah. read, do stain the nobility of uh, their kindred. Damn. That's a cool precept right there. That, that wouldn't lie, because we try to teach our brothers and sisters, this is what we got to do. Come back to this. We tell uh, married, uh, married couples, right, who go through their ups and downs, apply this. But then they don't, they don't want to apply the correction, oh, yeah. and yeah. they fall away. Hey, hey, that's a good thing you bring it up. We've literally heard uh, not much the brothers, but the sisters say, oh, I don't want no more counsel. I really heard a brother say that yet. It's only been sisters in a marriage that said that in my time, my little youthful childhood in this truth. It's only been women saying, I don't want no more counsel. And guess where they at? All the ones that told me that. Guess where they at, Officer Judah? Out of this truth. They not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> they not here on this Sabbath day. Nope, 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 nope. Not here. And that, that All of them have that. destroyed their marriage they self. Yep. For, for, for being constant, because it's not just like one or two times you give it to them. It's over and over and over again. And after a while, they harden their heart, and they decide, you know what? I don't, need, I, hey, I don't so want that no more. With that scripture, that lets you know why we got kicked out of the land. After much there correction from God, he said, you know what? Damn it. I, got to, I just got to take my name from them. Can't nobody know that they belong to me? Not until... They start acting like an honorable people, receiving correction. Then I'll put my name back on them. And I'll give them back the nobility. Yep, I give it back to them. I'll, give them, I'll tell them how to dress. I'll tell them what to eat. I'll tell them when to worship me. And then everybody going to know that them's my children on the earth again when they begin to receive correction once again. As long as we don't harden our neck and reject it. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. It's grievous to those that are forsaken the way of the Lord. Read on. And he that hateth reproof shall die. So the moment that this truth or, the, or correction, not the truth, because we all love the lovely sound. We're going to rule over nations. Rah, we love that stuff. But we don't like the correction. We see it all the time with our brothers and sisters on the street. They will listen to us all day as long as we're going over Deuteronomy 28, what the enemy did to us and, and the sins we can. But when you start going into the laws that correct them, they get a phone call. Ding, ding, ding. Start looking at the phone. Oh, I got to take this call. I got to call. Oh, my bus coming. But it says, correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. The moment correction becomes grievous to you, and you harden your neck, just know Satan is trying to take you away from this truth. He is riding your back, whispering in your ear, they don't like you, man. That's why they keep doing that. That's why they keep calling. That's why they keep correcting you, man. They got something against you. It's your they job. Be all in your you business. got that good job, man. That's why they messing with you, man. You you know more than them because you you watch more videos. You man, two years around here don't mean nothing. God dealing with all of y'all the same way. They don't like you. And you will begin to forsake the way and find yourself somewhere else. Man, white Jesus is the way. They don't know what they're talking about. Look at them little sanctuaries that they got. Look at that mega church that T.D. Snakes got. Surely the Lord is dealing with him. Go over there. Go over there. Creflo steal your dollars. Not understanding the damn Bible says it's going to be little sanctuaries all over. Read that again one more time. Proverbs 15 and 10. Verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. If you hate correction, you're going to die. First spiritually, and then physically. Look at us as a nation. We refuse to hearken to the correction of God, and we die spiritually more and more. And the more we increase, the more we died. That's a, how does that happen? The more you increase, the more you die. Because spiritually, we refuse the correction of God. Constantly. Proverbs 15, and uh, let's read verse 32. Same chapter? Yep, jump up to verse 32. Verse 32. 
He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. He that refuses correction, God is ultimately saying you hate yourself. You literally just, you might not say it outrightly, but you rejecting the correction and counsel that ultimately comes from God means that you really don't care about yourself inter internally. Because at the end of the day, you will be judged. All of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And if you are not uh, or haven't put out malice, gal, envy, lust, adultery, all of those things out of your spirit, you are going to burn for your spirit, not your flesh, because this is that's carnal. Your spirit is going to be tortured forever. And we is ways that we can't even imagine that that's going to happen to us. None of us is fortune tellers. All you can do is read the Bible and believe, thus saith the Lord, through the history that has happened to us and then the signs of the times. Read that again, verse 32. Verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. You get understanding on the ways that you are not right in the eyes of God, in the ways that you are not acting like your ancestors and being rebellious Cause in, in the correction. Because why? Um, give me that Mark chapter 7, verse 21, real quick. This is why you can't despise the correction when it comes your way. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Yeah, read that. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, uh -huh. blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's why you can't, that's why if you refuse or uh, despise instruction, you hate your own soul because that's what's in us. It's in all of us, in every single one of us. Ain't none of us more righteous than the next person, the next brother, the next sister. All of those things are in us. We grew up in those things, living those ways with those thoughts. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 7, read 14 through 18 for proof. And you know, that's like wounds. You get a wound, a deep wound, left untreated, that thing gets uh, 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 green, gang gangrenous or whatever the, the word yeah, is. Yeah. And it starts to get worse and worse. It's called uh, Christ, I mean, uh, God said, call it putrefying sores. Putrefying in, sores. In Isaiah. Right. That had never been bound up. Right. The to this day. Right. <laughs> the, and the, the correction is the binding up of those wounds. There you go. The the the, the, the plaster and the, the, uh, the salve mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. That's what helps to heal those wounds. Give me that in uh, Romans 7, read 14 through 18. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Uh -huh. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, if 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 he's held back from his lustly, uh, his fleshly desires, if the law is doing that, he consent. The law is good. That's that's what it is. Cause the law is spiritual. That's the only thing that's gonna keep me from doing those things. Read on. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in uh -huh. me. For I know that in me that, that in me that is in my flesh. In our flesh dwelleth no good thing. No good thing is in our flesh. We need correction. We can't despise it. We can't harden our neck against it because in our flesh is no good thing. And if you follow after the flesh, it will destroy you. Look at us as a nation. It'll destroy us. Now go to Sirach 16, reverse 11 and 12. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 11. And if there be one stiff necked among the people, it is marvel if he escape unpunished. Uh -huh. For mercy and wrath are with him. Mercy and wrath come from God. Go ahead. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. He'll also pour out his displeasure. Read. As his mercy is great. As his mercy is great. So is his correction so also. So is his correction also. When God got to correct you, it looks like slavery. <laughs> When God got to correct you, it looks like 500 million Native Americans gone. 
they still talk about it 500 years later, how bad it was. God's correction looked like 200 million so-called Hispanics dead. That's what it looks like. 100 million dead in the slave trade. Oppression. To this day, that's what the correction of God looks like because it is mighty when he pulls it out. He don't do nothing. He don't do things little or on a small level. God do it on a grand level so you know it's him. <laughs> yeah, that was God that did that to them people right there. That, Who else will put them on the ship? That, that's, that's so heavy because it says his mercy is great. Remember, we read before that he knew from the beginning that we would be a rebellious people. Yeah. But yet he's still, he's still good, choosing good point. to correct us and bring us back to him so that we can ultimately get what he promised to our forefathers in the beginning. Read uh, verse 12 again. Good verse point. Tw verse 12. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judgeth a man according to his works. What does that mean? That you only get corrected. Correction only comes by your actions. A lot of us get upset when we being corrected like it came out the blue. <laughs> Why are you correcting me? I have done nothing wrong. Yes, you did. You, I wouldn't be here. If you was doing everything, thus saith the Lord, if you was Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit, you would have no need for correction. If we was holiest and, and righteous as a nation, we would need no correction. If we were in youths in the truth and newborn babes, we wouldn't need correction. Correction only comes by our actions. So when correction does come, you shouldn't be upset or angry or grievous at it because it's to make you right in the eyes of God. Um, we stretch for time. So jump to, uh, did we reverse? Yep, we did. Uh, Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, and I want you to read verse 12. The spirit of correction. These are things that, you, what spirit you got to be in. You got to think of these things. You judge a man according to his work. So if you mess up, your correction got to come. Receive it. Don't be hard-necked against it. Uh, yep, read that. What did I say? Jer yep, 12, read four through 14 real quick. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. That's no healing medicine. Let you, like we said, you were saying about the putrefying sores. No healing medicine. We ain't received correction as a nation since we was cast out of our land. Not, not by man. They've let us go on a free fall to our own destruction. Read on. Verse 14. Yep, here he goes. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. Uh -huh. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquities, because thy sins were increased. We need correction from our leaders because nobody else gives a damn about us. All our lovers, all those that... that uh, like to see you Negroes hoop and, and throw a football and run a track, uh, um, uh, Usain Bolt, and and uh, entertain them in rap music, none of them is saying, hey, 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 y'all, y'all got to stop fornicating as a nation. Y'all just, uh, y'all got 70 to 80 percent of uh, um, uh, single parent households, and it's turning into gangs on the streets, and you're filling up uh, the prison systems, nobody has said that to you to correct you. And if they do, they turn them into Colin Kaepernick. Yep. They hate Shut you for out. it. Yep. Nobody has done that. So we need correction from our leaders when they give it to us because all our lovers have forgotten us. They don't care nothing about you. They make money off of your uh, rebellion. The nations make money off of us being rebellious to God. Pull up that uh, image of a quote that Bishop said. Uh, read that for us, soldier. I was never trying to build an organization. He was never trying to build an organization. Only an organized nation. That's a man that loves his people. That's a man that cares about his people. All the bishops and the deacons that started Israel United in Christ and have matured in this truth that are fathers to us, 30 years, 20 years in it. Those are men that love their people and have not forgotten about us. Therefore, they correct us. 
captains get correction from deacons, deacons correction from bishop, uh, all the way down to the brothers that sit in black, all the way down to the sisters that are in the back, is because nobody else cares for us. They the only people that really care about they, their own people. That's it. He was never trying to build an organization, but just an organized nation. Read um, Jeremiah 30. Is that what I want? Yep, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered so thee. So God is trying to save us because he makes a full end. Read on. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure. He's going to correct us little by little. So, Jeremiah 5.17. I mean, Job 5.17. Let's end it on this. Job chapter 5, verse 17. So what spirit should you have in, in correction? Read that. Job chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Happy is the man whom God correcteth. Read on. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Despise not the correction of God. Be happy. Have a spirit of joy when correction comes. Jump down to the last verse. For what reason? Verse 27. Lo, this we have searched in. Searched, searched it. it. So it is, hear it. And hear it, hear it. Read on. And know thou it for thy good. Correction is for our good. Because nobody else cares about us. Only the brothers, uh, uh, the bishops and deacons that set up Israel United in Christ have our best interest. So receive the correction when it comes so you can ultimately be worthy of eternal life. <laughs>. Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.